Irland. Irland. Irland here. Larry's present. Hey, it's Oodle, your favorite DJ. Hey, it's Oodle, your favorite DJ. Do we answer or don't you answer? I don't have a character. This is Nithria. <laughs> you made a great question. <laughs> Rest in peace. Okay. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Okay, so I have to up Discord audio. Okay, so I have to up Discord. Or mine a little. We'll get this figured out. Slowly but surely. Okay. Welcome one and all we'll to out. Strixhaven. Slowly but surely. Okay. Welcome. You find yourselves in the middle of a large plaza in the middle of a large plaza uh, in the center campus there is a large giant half circle of campus. stone shards there that expand outwards in like a horizon half circle of stone shards that and in the center, you see a bustle of new silver-robed students, some with red, some with green, some with black striping of the lining of their robes. It looks like this is where you can see on a small podium at the center, just in front of the biblioplex uh, doors, there are a bunch of students uh, milling about, and there is a professor kind of beckoning everyone in. Uh, Ayland, where do we find you as the professor kind of is calling out to everyone? Uh, where do we find you? Ayland's sitting on the steps, actually. Just He's got out his, um, his instrument. It's a, uh, I guess I see a, 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 a long-necked violin of sorts. Uh, he's playing it with only three strings, and he's uh, strumming on it, uh, basically passing time waiting for these people to get their shit together. Okay. Do you do anything to like help get the the people together? You notice that there is a crowd of students who are kind of coming over to your music. Um, but right now yeah, they're they kind of like caught between listening to you and the professor who's shouting louder than the right music you're playing. Kind of like caught between I'll uh, pipe paper shit. Sure, let's. Uh, I'll. Uh, I'll. Uh, I'll listen, listen to what the professor said, said, and then I'll uh, make it louder by uh, just with some projection and try and get them to follow me into the building. Okay. Uh, can you give me a uh, when you say that you're like mimicking them? Are you doing so with the music or like? Yes, I'll, I might even actually make the uh, what he's saying into a little ditty as I try and get it. Okay. Uh, make a performance roll for me. Uh, sure. Sorry, I'll just look at my character. Both. No worries. We're all going to be getting used to these uh, once again. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm here to help. 
performance check. All right. Oof, that's a natural one. <laughs> so what is it that's like messing with your rhythm right now, Aelin? Oh, no. My, my rhythm is... Your rhythm, sorry, you kind of cut off. Sorry, my rhythm is is fine. It's everybody else is out of sync with me. Okay. So I'm just I'm I'm doing like some some weird fiddle jazz basically. Okay. <laughs> and it doesn't really. So I start walking off thinking that people are gonna follow me, and they're not going to. Uh, Barry, I th I think you're probably the first person that notices this uh, Pied Piper uh, leading a plethora of invisible people towards the building um, away from the professor who's beckoning people to the stage um, like what so Barry what? was kind of uh, mm -hmm. standing in line last in line with his nose in a book okay uh, and that's when he noticed this happening um, the line wasn't moving very fast so he decided to join this line, but again, he's last in line. Okay, so we see him like many, many paces behind uh, Aelin as he's like walking around. Yes. Okay. So, we, so we we can kind of see like as as you guys are walking, you are like thirty, forty feet behind him. Sure. Okay. Um. Oodle, uh, you are, you see after this uh, Piper has begun to play his tune, uh, he has in fact gained a, a follower. However, you notice that they are following at quite a distance. Uh, their black hair and their robes would suggest they're a student, uh, but their gait and uh, the way they walk has uh, drawn your attention. Okay, so uh, sorry, my connection actually dropped off for a little bit. Uh, the last thing I heard before was that Brian was gonna get ready to Pie Piper everything. Okay. Uh, and I guess that's just that's just what happened. Uh, so he unfortunately uh, is uh, unfortunately marching to the beat of his own drum. Uh, he doesn't seem to have many people following him. Feel free to get back into roll twenty when uh, available, um, because it shows that you've been completely disconnected. Um. But what you are noticing is that despite the fact he kind of just wandered off on his own, um, you see a silver-robed student with black hair uh, has actually started to follow him, but at like 40 to 50 feet uh, behind him, rather than you would assume right behind uh, the quote-unquote piper. Okay, so if I see this... Uh, I'm I'm gonna follow in behind as well. Um, not exactly gonna seem like Oodle's gonna follow in. Not exactly trying to seem stealthy or anything. If anyone realizes that he is watching and following, he's just gonna keep continuing doing this as well. But he's uh, just more interested and about to see what ex exactly is going on, what's about to happen uh, in this whole situation, because this is the most exciting thing that he's seen all week. Okay. Uh, Nithlia, you um find yourself currently among the throes of uh, students that are clamoring for the professor's attention uh, near the stage. Uh, but uh, oftentimes uh, there are smaller, more diminutive students who are bumping into you, taking one look at you and uh, stepping back uh, as they appear upon your uh, display, displeased visage. Um, they seem to be giving you a bit of a cautious uh, birth once they realize that you are um, seemingly in a foul mood. Uh, but the sound of music has picked up in your ear uh, and sounds a lot more interesting of a tune than the droning of the professor who still continues to struggle to get the group together. I look at one of the students that bump into me and I smile 
kind of almost menacingly, but it's also sweet. Sweet but terrifying. Okay. And I just ask, hey, do you know where that music is coming from? I'd love to know. Okay. Make a persuasion check for me. And the way that sure. uh, you'll do that on roll 20 uh, is similar to how we did when we were doing the Scooby-Doo D&D game. Uh, do you, would you like a refresher or? I type it, but like, what am uh, I rolling? What you can do, uh, if you go to your character sheet on the right hand tab, yeah. um, you'll have the t ca uh, character sheet says Nithlia. You can actually click on the action itself. So on the character sheet, you'll see where it says your strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence under saving throws. Right yeah. below that is all your skills. Um, there's one that's labeled persuasion. You can actually click the word persuasion and it will roll your persuasion check. Perfect. Um, the younger student uh, appears to be perhaps a uh, dragonkin of some sort, uh, but he stammers uh, briefly. He's got these large, wide rimmed spectacles on. Uh, his eyes are squinting, even though these glasses he's been wearing um, are uh, much way oversized for his face. Uh, and you notice that uh, he's got a very small lightning-shaped horn uh, protruding from his forehead. He's got this uh, greenish, uh, scaly uh, hue to him, and he stammers out, I, I'm so sorry. I, uh, it's the music, and he points uh, a little bit to the northwest over in this direction here, uh, where you can see uh, th just barely through the crowd uh, is a uh, figure currently playing their instrument, uh, sh followed behind not too long after, about 40 to 50 feet, by a uh, shorter black-haired human and a green-scaled, red-brownish-haired lizard folk um, who seems to carry some, like, elvish uh, appearance to them as well. Like, their ears are pointed like an elf, and uh, their frills are very, like, elven. Like, there's a little bit of an elvish decoration in their hair. Um, but uh, you've spotted now the uh, actor and the, the musician as he plays. Uh, as soon as you look over in that direction, when you turn back, the lightning bolt uh, horned dragonkin uh, seems to have scampered off. Oh my. I guess I scared it. Well, the music told me what I wanted to know. Off I go to bigger and better things. If it's even going to be interesting. So I walk on over and I join their line. Curiosity and boredom, because I have nothing else better to do. All right. So, Aeland, uh, you find yourself now entering the Biblioplex, blissfully unaware of what kind of train or uh, situation has kind of developed. And uh, as you enter, there is a large banner that goes from welcome students to a brush that like scrubs the cloth and the words disappear and it says welcome Aeland and then a moment later maybe about a minute or two uh, a couple more names the Aeland gets scrubbed out welcome Siphon and it gets scrubbed out welcome Barry and then it gets scrubbed out Welcome, Nithlia. Uh, it's at that moment that a professor wearing dark black robes and a bright green striping uh, approaches uh, the four of you, uh, clasping their hands together. It is a long, uh, tall uh, elf. Their hair uh, is pulled back in a bun. However, uh, what is mostly of note are the, like, odd twigs that both, like, stick out of their hair as if they've just been, like, foraging in the, in the bush. 
but also have made like a small unintentional uh, like circlet around their head. There's a couple berries that are just hanging there that look like they're ready to be plucked any time. Uh, and she bows gracefully to the to the four of you and says, welcome, welcome. I see you're some of the first students to arrive. Welcome one and all to Strixhaven. I am Melinda Bitterblossom and I am one of the younger uh, teachers on campus, but it is my duty today to show you around and introduce you to the wonders that are Strixhaven. She gestures to each of you with a warm smile. And you can see that there are a few other students who are being gently uh, goaded to this uh, kind of tour. You can see off to the side, um, not too far away, there's actually a group of six uh, students in silver robes. They, ha they each have a scroll. Uh, the scrolls themselves seem to have uh, what you guys can see is like glowing writing. Uh, some of them are glowing and some of them are not. Uh, you can see one of them uh, jump over towards a fountain uh, near the center of this biblioplex. And near the fountain, you see in his hand a sphere, a sphere rather, uh, that uh, has a small little tail uh, that is glowing. And as he clutches it, you see the scroll in their hand. Uh, one of the lines lights up. Uh, and he like holds it upright and the, the, the other five in their group all cheer and like help him up uh, as they kind of reconvene. And then they begin pointing to different directions to see where they want to go next. Looks like they're engaging in some sort of hunt or like a scavenger hunt perhaps. Uh, and Melinda takes a moment to look over at them, uh, notices uh, Ayland, uh, uh that you looked over there uh, first and uh, gestures to you and says, ah, yes, uh, that is a very important part of our orientation week. Uh, we actually have the students visit each of the uh, colleges and procure an item uh, to uh, show that they've kind of investigated the, the different colleges a little bit. Uh, each scavenger hunt's a little different. Some find theirs a little harder, some find theirs a little easier. And the professors are more than happy to help you on your way. But uh, for now, I'm just going to show you around the Biblioplex. Um, I see all of you here are uh, from different schools, uh, colleges actually, have been invited. And I think that's just wonderful to see. And she smiles a very bright smile and clasps her hands together. Uh, and Barry, uh, you, look over, you see her look over at you. And she's, uh, you think for a second, like a, a smile that couldn't be any wider has managed just another inch uh, of, a, of a broader beaming smile as she gazes upon your robing. Uh, I look back at her. Uh, I don't smile, but uh, I kind of nod my head a little bit. You see her visage... Um, each of you uh, for a moment uh, goes from a very broad welcoming smile to like a bit of like a confusion, like as if she expected it maybe a different response, uh, but is quickly overwritten by a composure more of a uh, ready to get started. You, um, you get the impression there was something perhaps on her mind. Uh, but she's quickly hurrying that away, and she gestures off uh, to the left to follow her. Yeah, that looks like a long journey over there. Is it okay if I pick a couple berries from your head? Just for a little snack? Uh, sh she kind of looks at you quizzically. Uh, make a persuasion check. So, uh, which dice would I roll for that? Uh, so what you're gonna do, um, uh, Oodle, is on roll twenty. There's gonna be a little right, a white tab on the right hand side. Have you found your character sheet? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. When you open your character sheet, there's gonna be a tab specifically for it. Um, it'll say character sheet. So make sure you've selected that. 
On your left hand side you're going to see your stats followed by a little block that says inspiration, proficiency bonus, saving throws and then it's going to have a bunch of skills right below that. What you're going to want to do is just click on the word persuasion and that will roll your persuasion uh, as a check. Whew. Wow. Um, so uh, Oodle, I have to ask. It. Um, it, so what you'll do now that you've clicked your character uh, sheet oh. there, you'll see that mm -hmm. there's a little blue highlight on which box the roll went into. If you click on that, it'll put it. Uh, you'll see the roll has been put into chat. Uh, you see her taken aback for a moment, um, but she realizes that you're referring to the like the random branches that she got stuck in her hair, and she pulls it out and realizes maybe for the first time that there are berries on these branches, uh, and she like she's like uh I don't see why not like you can tell perhaps that there's like a moment of like like relaxation like she's glad that somebody pointed out that maybe she was a little bit unkempt um and she offers you the branch uh with the six berries on it he says oh, of course uh, my yeah by all means um i didn't actually realize this was stuck in my hair still i thought i'd gotten them all out you can tell awesome. that there's like six or seven more branches still nestled in her large uh bush of hair uh upon her head you know that's awesome i'll tell you what if i find any more branches sticking out of your head there i'll just pull it from there to save you the trouble <laughs> she, she 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 shakes her head and waves her hand uh as if to dismiss the no she says no no it's it's okay you've done me a great service already i i appreciate it i'll, I'll take a look in a little bit and, and fix myself up i i apologize for showing you such an unkempt side of myself and she like looks over at nithlia like perhaps she's gauging your response specifically like a lady to lady uh moment i just kind of like reset at her and i look away okay it's her problem not mine Um, expecting perhaps uh, uh, a sniggering remark or a uh, perhaps a little quip uh, at her um, at her dismay she seems a bit relieved that you didn't really offer any sort of criticism or uh, anything and she finally uh, takes that opportunity to uh, bring the four of you with her um, unless any of you have anything else to uh, uh, request or mention. And you find yourselves now uh, at the very uh, center of the bibliotheque. We will pull that up for you guys here. Where did... Oh, I thought I had that map. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. So at this moment... Uh, Elin realized that she was talking to him and uh, starts um, putting uh, just putting away his instrument, slinging it on his back and saying, uh, what was that about? What? And that's it. Okay. Uh, does anyone care to uh, enlighten um, Elin on what's going on? Yeah, I'll I'll nudge one of the people beside me. Um, um, um Nithya, I believe her name was from what the sign was saying. I nudge her and say, "Um, what was she talking about?" I'm going to be honest. I wasn't paying attention either, but uh, one of the guys pulled some berries out of her hair. It's a little funny, but I don't think anything important actually happened. Well, that's good. Uh, I'd hate to miss the important stuff that ever actually happened in this place. If anything important would ever happen in this place. I like your train of thought. 
I don't mean to butt in on your guys' conversation, but I heard you talking about important stuff, and these berries are pretty awesome, so I think that was the best thing to happen. If you guys want some, I have some extras. After a few moments, it doesn't look like anybody's taking up on that offer. Do you just consume the berries that uh, she had found? Oodle? One moment. You guys can't hear me, right? Yeah. Oh, well, we lost Oodle again. Welcome back, Oodle. Sorry, I had a, a quick coma from those berries. I don't think they're so good after all. <laughs> uh, but you do eat the the berries. Uh, yeah, I'll keep snacking on them, even though they're kind of okay. blacking me out from existence there. Yeah, uh, make a uh, constitution saving throw for me. Did I acquire a berry as well? Oh, I did not hear if you wish to fetch a berry from uh, Oodle. I apologize. Yeah, um, I think some mine are off as well or something. Like, I couldn't hear anything for a while. Okay. I also offered to grow some if anybody wanted some berries. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name I wonder is if Discord had a hiccup then. I apologize. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Barry, and I would love to have a Barry. Nice to meet you, Barry. I'd love to grow you some berries. Oh, well, she's offering to grow berries. I'm not going to share any more of mine. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I didn't realize they were that common. Um, well, from what it sounds like, your berries don't really sound like they're stomach friendly, so that's fine with me. Um, it makes for a good Friday night. So, Oodle, uh, on your character sheet, yeah, okay, so you got the constitution save, awesome. Okay, um, you notice hey, at first... Ryan, uh, quick question. Yes? I, where does it show up on here when you make the roll? So on on uh, okay, so you you saw where you found your character sheet, right? And the tab in the upper right, um, there's a little chat window. Just two buttons to the left of where that little character sheet icon is. When you click oh, on that, it's going to show you all the rolls that you've made so far. Um, so you roll it. It'll show you two rolls. It does that because it assumes that there's a chance that you might have rolled with advantage. Um, but in this particular case, uh, it was just a standard roll. So we take the first result, which was a 14. And uh, with a 14, uh, you succeed. Uh, but uh, Aeland, Barry, Nithlia, uh, you guys are the first ones to notice that Oodle's uh, facial features look like they took on a very beautiful like uh, gloss to them. like. Uh, almost like it accentuated his features for for a moment, but uh, you do notice, uh, Oodle, that your stomach uh, it's grumbling a bit. It was a bit sour, tasted a little bit off, but um... oh my god! Um, do you know what kind of berries you're eating? Your, your face is changing quite a bit. Um, should I roll like a perception? Check for yeah, why don't you make a I'm uh, a druid, so I should be able to identify Why don't you make a medicine check for me? A medicine check? Yes, please. Sure. Yo, teacher lady, was there peanut butter in this? I don't feel so good. I rolled. Okay. Um actually, you know what? Oh no. Uh okay. So it looks like um the berries are as best you can guess, are not normally consumed by humanoids because you notice that like it was almost something to, akin to an allergic reaction, but it seemed to carry some sort of magical or 
unknown effect. You'd probably have to have somebody uh, uh, investigate the magical side of it a little bit more. But it seemed to have given his uh, visual um, face a little bit, just a little bit of a, almost as if he suddenly had makeup applied uh, to a uh, to accentuate some of his more beautiful features before the, the, the magic kind of faded away very quickly. I was going to say, since I'm a cannon neutral, can I offer to grow him different berries that'll, like, do something else to him? Uh, you could certainly try. Um, with uh, the fact that you are a druid, um, for the most part, there are spells that generate actual, like, nutritious food and the like. Um, do you have the good berry spell prepared? Berries? No. Good berry. Uh, then you can try to create uh, berries. Uh, I will allow you to make an arcana check. But uh, it will be... Like, you know what the spell Goodberry is, but you, you haven't recited it yet today. And so it's not really fresh in your mind. You're kind of probing for something that... There is a risk that it couldn't necessarily turn out the way you might expect. Okay. Um... But you're welcome to try. Um, so you uh, just reach into the back of your mind, and uh, what do you use as like your focus, Nithlia, when you are casting something or trying to grow berries or trying to produce um, something uh, like a flower? Like you do have the Druid Craft Cantrip, uh, you can certainly cast that if you'd like. Um, well, in this case. Nithlia just wants to add to the chaos. Okay. Uh, so she sees that his face is changing, so she's like, I wonder if I can fuck it up a little more. Um, so she's just trying to grow some random berries to just fuck around with. So there's okay. nothing. Maybe what she's thinking of is just something funny, because usually when she tries to grow something, she thinks of, like, beauty. She thinks of, like, right. the smell of roses and colors and shit like that. In this case, she's just trying to be a chaotic force. <laughs> so, she's probably thinking of, like, a funny joke, or clowns or something. Right. If that makes sense. Okay. Um. Uh, so, I just kind of reach into my bag, and I'm like, you know, maybe I have something for you. Cherries and berries, cherries and berries, cherries and berries, and I just kind of chant that. Okay. Uh, out of your uh, pouch uh, as you finish casting this spell um, or a kind of uh, sudden unpracticed uh, spell um, you procure out of your uh, out of a branch that uh, Oodle had kind of left over now that it's been picked clean of berries um, you see four berries of different colors uh, a green round berry a black multi-pipped uh, berry, a pink one that seems to have like a teardrop petal that kind of hangs down, and uh, lastly a blue uh, berry that seems to have uh, a, a little bit of a cold chill to it that seems cold to the touch. Uh, which one uh, do you offer him one, or do you have a specific one you would offer him? I offer him all of them, and I tell him to eat them all at once. Take this whole branch. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Sorry, but go ahead. Okay. Oh, if you take this one branch, eat all the berries on it, I guarantee they'll help you. You're going to look a little different, but it'll be better than how you look now. You know, I'll say two things to that. Uh, first, when you were saying cherries and berries there to yourself, I thought you were going to make more of that guy over there, so I'm pretty sure I heard his name was Barry. Uh, second thing is, I'm pretty sure you're up to no good, but I'm going to do it anyway, so give me that branch. Here you go. Uh, Oodle takes that branch and he, uh, he takes all the berries off in his mouth, kind of like the way a cartoon does to a fish, and just leaves the skeleton. <laughs> so he takes all of it at once. It's like, mmm. One of those were icy. Oh my goodness, you really ate all the berries at once. You're absolutely mad. 
This is going to be awesome. Okay, Oodle, uh, I'm going to have you make a uh, another constitution saving throw. Uh, you've now ingested quite a few different types of berries, uh, all in a very quick, uh, brief amount, uh, brief sitting. And uh, you can tell that your stomach no, wasn't pleased with the first one, and these don't seem to be helping. But, uh, Nithlia, against your... Uh, perhaps like in surprise to what you thought was going to be a very botched spell. Um, it seems to have uh, brought out Oodle's best. Um, Aeland Barry um, with you stands a very, very beautiful uh, lizard elf um, half elf half lizardman uh who now seems like his hair looks freshly showered and washed there's a hint of a fragrance lingering in the air uh that smells uh like a delicious meal uh or delicious uh food that reminds you of home or uh, of a comfort to you um Nithlia, uh, his eyes seem to have a vibrancy, a life to them that you wouldn't have expected or w didn't see a moment ago. Uh, and Oodle, um, you just feel great. Um, please make a note for yourself that you, you currently, uh, at least until the effects wear off, uh, have advantage on your charisma checks. absolute madman. I mean, I did say it helped your appearance, whether it was good or bad. That was up to determination on either side, really. Look at you! Look at you! You cheeky asshole! Look at you! I feel like the prettiest girl on campus right now, I'm not gonna lie. This is awesome. As, as you should, mate. As you should. Aaron, if you had to play a song right now to match my appearance, what would it be? Illand? Illand? Oh, well, haven't been able to hear him for the last few seconds. Illand also have a berry that sent him to the Shadow Realm for a couple minutes? What happened? Uh, he's, I think he's trying to remedy it, but... He's just frozen there. Illand. Illand! Someone snap a finger in his face, I'm getting scared. Try re-logging, perhaps. We'll see if that... Uh... Yeah, I don't know about this guy. He's just kind of standing there. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's like glazed over in the eyes. I wonder if he's okay. Do you think he's catatonic? I don't know if my beauty kind of... Put him in a Can you hear me now? Or... Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Aeon's okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, I've... You worried I've... us there for a second, man. Oh. We've lost him. Lost oh. me again. No, we got you again. Weird. It's a very. It's just in and out for some reason today. For I had reason. like a whole conversation before, and there was no response. <laughs> Didn't realize that you were having oh. an issue, and I apologize. Yeah. No, I didn't know it either until just then. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, I'll... Uh, in terms of playing a song... I'm not really in the mood! <laughs> so okay. The one. You know, that that's fair. Uh, that's fair. I... If you excuse me for a second, if you hear me talking to someone named Hector, asking him to whistle a tune in uh, replacement of that, just, just ignore that. Uh, and then Oodle looks into his bag and he tells Hector to start whistling something for him. Okay. Uh, make an arcana check for me. I wonder if he's trying to tell us that his bag is clean. Or it's just a way of hiding the fact that he talks to himself. 
Okay, oh holy yeah, shit. Okay, fun. Oodle, my lord, man. One button what click. What are you clicking? <laughs> Did you click the wrong one? Several you've, of them. You've clicked like many. <laughs> it's like, sorry, <laughs> one second. Okay, this next one's gonna be Icon, I swear to god. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh my okay. god. <laughs> yes, one click, please. Uh, I get nothing but blips in my ears when. Uh, people click buttons uh, too many times. Uh, give oh, me one second. My... The first time? Uh, I, we got charisma, then athletics three times, then medicine once, then arcana three uh, twice, and then bites, and then another arcana. So we're kind of getting uh, there. Ch ch choose whichever one was clicked first, I guess. I don't... Yeah, no <laughs> worries. <laughs> Everything's... Oh, yeah, you choose the last two. That's funny. <laughs> okay, give me one second. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Sorry, I had to step away for a second. Uh, uh, what did I miss? Uh, both you and Aelin just kind of glossed over in the eyes there for a little bit. It was kind of scary, man. Okay. I'm pretty okay. now, though. <laughs> okay. Everybody good in terms of uh, voice? Let's do a little I sound off here. so. Okay. Uh, Aelin, you're good? Sounds like it. Okay. Barry, you good? I'm good. I'm just, uh, I guess I have to leave for a sec, so I don't know what's going on. No worries. Uh, we've been trying to troubleshoot uh, Illin's issues, because apparently they were having voice issues, and we didn't know. But they're good now. Um, Oodle is uh, do is currently in the middle of asking Illin um, uh, to play them a song, and they refused because they weren't in the mood. Uh, and so uh, Oodle has now begun talking to something in their bag, asking them to play a song. Uh, and you can hear quiet murmuring uh, between the two of them. It sounds like whispering or, or like a, it's a very quiet tone. Uh, but uh, Oodle, um, he's like, I, I, I thought we weren't supposed to make a scene. So this is an Oodle's bag that he's talking to. You hear a sound, uh, you hear a voice from Oodle's bag, say, uh, pretty quietly, but you do hear it. You guys are all pretty close. Uh, I thought we weren't supposed to make a scene. Why don't you get us some food, pal? We're not fucking nuts. <laughs> it wouldn't be a scene, Hector. You'd just be whistling. If you if you didn't say anything and just whistled, you wouldn't be causing a scene right now. Wait. What do you mean I wouldn't be causing a scene? You're asking me to make music out of a bag. Out of a bag? It's not the bag. He's got a creature in the bag. I mean, berry. I, 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 I did a bunch of berries just appeared on a branch for a second. Like, well, like, you're really gonna think that whistling coming out of my bag is gonna be bad? Like, the, fu the gig's already over, Hector. You kind of ruined it. I'm, I'm uh, okay, this fine, Oodle. Fine, Oodle. And he, <laughs> and you hear him begin to whistle. Um. And so Hector is going to make a performance check. Wow, he just bought a little creature inside his bag. Amazing. Uh, I would say it's still just a bag. I'm not yeah. sure if he's arguing with a bag. He's saying in the bag or if he's still arguing with himself. The ventriloquism is supposedly the thing. I don't know. Okay. After a few moments, you hear a very ominous, low whistling. Like a... It sounds more like, like a cold wind blowing in the trees than a song. Um, but uh, there is a bit of a like up and down change in pitch occasionally but to most this is something you might hear like when you're uh undergoing like back in elementary when you had to stay over at a friend's place but the window stayed open and the wind was blowing and it was just making all sorts of eerie noises um yeah never had that situation so i couldn't say um <laughs> for most of you I 
that's uh do I, do I hear this music? Yeah. Can you all hear it? Yeah. You call you all can hear what sounds like the blowing wind. Okay. And it well, uh I was raised in an encampment, so this is kind of exciting. Nithlia kind of just looks around and just feels a little off, but doesn't think anything of it. Okay. She just kind of, I guess, tries to look and listen for Rem. Okay. Should I, like, do I need to roll anything for that? Yeah, make a perception check for me. Um, while the sound of the ominous uh, whistling is of note, there are quite a few students just bustling about, uh, doing their scavenger hunts that are really making it hard to hear anything else of note in the uh, in the building so far. There's just like a general din of students moving down. You can see uh, over here um, off to your right, there are uh, a bunch of students like a gag, uh, like nine or ten of them. It looks like maybe they finished their scavenger hunt because they've begun to congregate. You can see that there's like four or five silver quill, a couple wither bloom, uh, and then uh, separate from the rest, there's a there's a lore hold and a quandrix person, and they seem to be having a bit of an intense debate. But you can't make over the just the general chatter uh, what they're discussing in the slightest. Are we supposed to be following this person that's ahead of us? What are we doing here? I mean, she like. Has anyone explained this to us? We're just here. Well, oh, hang on. We lost Oodle again. You okay there, Oodle? Oodle's here. He's, he's taking in the music. He loves it. Okay. Does Oodle have the mention door? Do you ask Oodle directly if he has the mention door? Or... I guess is the question. Like you're asking him, I assume. Uh, Oodle, do you have Dimension Door? Dimension Door? I don't believe you. Oh, yeah, and then showing up again. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, no, I think oh my god, I, I can't believe it took the, me that long to realize what... Oh my god. Oh. I think the person who who would control me in, in what people would call real life is just looking for a, a smell that's appeared within his house, but at the same time, that may be a weird fantasy that Oodle just has. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, at this point, you realize that uh, Melinda has a bitter blossom uh, is looking back at you all as you've kind of like begun chatting amongst yourselves. She's just patiently waiting, a smile on her face, uh, for you all to uh, follow along. But doesn't seem like particularly plussed about hurrying you guys up or beckoning you onwards. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, are, are we supposed to follow you? She, she smiles um, for a moment uh, after then uh, reverting to a more like uh, neutral... Um. Uh. Oh my God! Word expression. That's the word I wanted. Uh, she says, "No, no. It's it's quite all right. It's quite nice to see the uh, new students and how they mingle and how they quickly get to know one another. Um, the music is a bit haunting, but um, different uh, notes for different folks. She likes miles again." Besides, uh, with in Witherbloom, it's not like it's, we haven't heard uh, music like that before. Uh, the forests and jungles can be uh, quite spooky. And she smiles um, as if like she's putting on her best like Halloween witch impression. Ugh, don't do that again, please, please. That actually scared me a little bit. Um. Okay. So Nithya feels kind of like weary about it. So she kind of wants to. Persuade her to be a little honest. Um, if I roll persuasion, can I like, kind of like egg her on, to see what what she'll tell us? Okay, so you'd like to like get a better judge of like what she's uh currently feeling, 
and like potentially be like, you know, you seem a little hesitant. You don't have to lie to us. Is there something weird going on in the okay. woods? Um, or is there something weird about the music we're playing? Please sure. be so, honest. Yeah, so um, first, before I have you do a persuasion check, I'll have you do an insight check to better understand uh, her emotional state. Um, and this will give you a more like upfront Ooh. answer to that. Um, it does look like she's perhaps uh, concerned about the next groups that are coming in. Uh, or at least she's like occasionally her glance has been behind you guys to the doors behind where you uh, are kind of noticing that other students have been filtering in, but there have been professors to help guide them. Um, she's kind of gandered over, um, but uh, what I will uh, enable you is when you go to make your persuasion check, uh, you can do so with advantage. Oh, and I see you already rolled that before I uh, prompted you for it, but that's okay. We'll go with that. Um, she smiles. She says, Oh, it's just been a long uh, year, my child. Um, I assure you, uh, you guys have done nothing wrong. And I do honestly uh, quite enjoy uh, the banter you guys are currently um, uh, exchanging. I just um, wanted to help show you more of the school and for you guys to kind of be so focused on yourselves is wonderful, but... I can't wait for you all to see what we have uh, to show for you. If you'd like. And she like gestures as if if you don't want the tour, you're welcome to uh, return to the, the stage uh, with the professor uh, with the very monotone and dry voice. Uh, Is this uh, required of us to continue on with this? Or is it will it better our chances of getting into the places we need to be? She uh, thinks for a moment and uh, now that you've gotten a better read on her, Nithlia, like, you can tell she's like honestly thinking uh, about the advice she's going to give. Um, and she she looks over to you, uh, uh, Illand. Well, to be completely honest, no, it is not mandatory, but knowing what might await you and, uh, for example, partaking in the scavenger hunt that is planned and uh, some of the activities each of the colleges wish to have you engage in would give you a better understanding of what might interest you at the school and what you might get out of our many features. If you choose to just go it alone, you're welcome to do so, but... Um, most people at the college wish to have uh, either accompaniment or a raison d'être or something of a uh, some sort of like motivation. It's just meant to help uh, spice and entice uh, your uh, learning desire. And she she uh, her smile kind of returns to her. She kind of just vents perhaps for a moment. Uh, not at you, but rather just the general malaise students often have about, ugh, school. Well, then, by all means, lead the way. I'd rather know where I'm going and what's going to be in store for us in the future than mill about in the middle of this hallway. I suppose I could walk around before going to the greenhouse. Still time. Okay. Um... She nods, great, fantastic, come with me then. And she begins heading off uh, away from the central course. Uh, who would like to uh, take the lead and who would like to uh, follow in behind? Nithlia follows next to her. Okay. And just silently follows. Okay. I Oodle tries to get as close as possible to kind of pick another branch out of her hair because even though he's feeling great and looks beautiful at the moment, he's still a little bit hungry. Okay. Can you make a, a sleight of hand check for me, Oodle? Yeah, you're about to get like 20 twice dice rolls, so give me one second. Sleight of hand? Yep. Oh, that's dexterity. I didn't, I didn't press anything there. 
Are you doing this on your phone? Possibly. That would explain a lot. <laughs> Jesus <is> Christ! <laughs> How many natural 20s has he done? Jesus. Was that sleight of hand? I mean, he's also pressed the button about a bajillion times, but the fact he rolled two constitution saves with criticals at the same yeah. time, yeah. plus this, plus the very, very first one, yeah. I'm, I am actually in shock. I feel like your <laughs> phone is loaded. And should be investigated for uh, <laughs> horse shitness. Loaded with viruses, I'll say. Not definitely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> My lord. Um, I, I just I'm naturally skilled. That's that's Oodle. <laughs> yeah. Um. You guys watch as Oodle's following along, and like, she like turns to the left. Nithlia, she's tr she's trying to make small talk with you. Do you like uh, follow, or, like engage in small talk with her, or do you kind of mostly stay silent? I'm very distracted by Oodle, and all I can think is, is I don't need this eye for the crow to be very friendly, but for my crow to be like very wise and just want to be here. Okay. Um. So I'm distracted, um, and I'm kind of just looking through her because I'm watching this. this Okay. This guy with these branches are growing. So are you kind of doing the, like, uh, letting her kind of talk and, like, just like, uh-huh, yep, mm-hmm, like, that kind of thing, or? Yeah, so, okay. uh, yeah, which is great. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd love to learn more. How? So, N Nithlia, every time she turns to you to, like, continue, uh, to continue the conversation, you notice that another branch is missing. And then another, and then another... And then, uh, as you walk over uh, to this area here, uh, you guys all bump into uh, a, a young, um, young female halfling. I just gotta quickly uh, pull up her here. Do, 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 do token there. Uh, a lady by the name. Uh, of Rosie Miffinbip was fed litims. Uh, but uh, you guys have actually heard of her uh, around the campus very briefly uh, as a lady that often goes by the name Rosie. Uh, she almost bumps into you as she comes around the table uh, and bumps in, almost bumps into Melinda and uh, immediately uh, profusely apologizes. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. Um, uh, Melinda, my, I'm so sorry. Uh, is everything okay? I hope you're okay. And uh, a mo uh, she takes a moment to like brush off her uh, robes as like Rosie is like bumped into her. Uh, but Rosie like looks up and is like, oh, uh, Melinda, you've let your hair down. And, like, Melinda, for the first time, like, realizes that all the twigs that had, like, nestled her hair into a beautiful bun have now, like, her hair's just, like, at her shoulders, draped around. And at some point, she, like, re like realizes, and she's, like, she feels around for some of the sticks she was using as, like, bobby, makeshift bobby pins. And it's, like, where did, and she, like, turns around, and Oodle, where have you put the sticks? Uh, he's pretty much like holding them in one hand. He's using one hand as kind of a, like just eating them all off the same way he did before. And the, well, there's no berries the on any of those sticks. Is the question? Yeah, he's he's still holding them. Okay. In his other hand. Um, but, uh, do you try to obscure them around, at all, or are you? As soon as she turned around and saw that he was holding the branches, he pretty much just whipped it off to the side. Not just like toss to them really down the it. the like bookshelves out here. Yeah, a very half-assed attempt to just kind of hide it. Okay. He doesn't actually try. He just kind of throws it as soon as she looks. Okay. Uh, Except yeah. The so you, you as soon as you see her start to turn her head, as soon as the hair is mentioned, sticks whoo, gone out of your hands, and Nithlia, Aeland, Barry. You're not sure who took the sticks, but all you hear are the sound of sticks rattling down one of the the book uh case hallway uh bookcase pathways uh and is swiftly met by a uh robot that wheels around and down the the bookshelf hallway and it pulls out a dustpan it folds out a dustpan from his hand 
with a couple swift uh, sweeps, the sticks go into his little dustpan. You hear a crunch as his hand closes, and just as quickly as it showed up, it's right back down the uh, the bookcase's way and uh, disappears out of sight once more. Oh, wow. That, oh, that is some... And, and you can still see Melinda's, like, confused. She's looking at you. None, none of you have the sticks. Nobody saw who did it. And then all you saw was a robot sweeping up some random debris before quickly uh, zooming back off. I need one of those. Uh, I agree. That thing's awesome. Uh, uh, I will. I will uh, let you guys know that 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 um, cogwork machine is about ten foot tall, uh, and has a large like wheel appendage for legs that seems to roll in like a semi spherical fashion. Like it seems to roll just as easily on its side as it does as a as a as a tire, um, in some fashion. It seems to allow it to. It's pretty free movement. Um. I just offer, uh, Nicholas then offers to just grow some more branches for the lady. Okay. Um, she nods, um, and says, oh, by all means, please. Um, I feel a bit, and she likes feeling in her hair, still a little bit I confused. Just, I just look at her like, do you want them in your hair, or do you want to put them in your hair? Yeah, I'll, I'll put them in my hair after, but I, I would love to, uh, a couple of sticks that, to fix my hair a little bit later. Um, she, you can tell she's very embarrassed. Very embarrassed. Okay. Um, Oodle, she looks like if I... Uh, she looks like a much more like elegant elf uh, with her hair down. You could tell that she was like intentionally trying to like keep her general aesthetic very sloppy um but her hair just falls apart gently to each side one side of her hair is much longer uh, it's probably the side she uses to kind of for make her bun uh normally but uh, she kind of like gives a very embarrassed smile nithlia as you like finish crafting the the sticks to offer to her um before Rosie pips up and she says, oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, and I, I'm sorry for pointing that out, Melinda. I seem to have caused you some distress. Melinda uh, gestures, it's okay, Rosie, it's it's fine. I just wasn't expecting uh, to have let my hair down. I don't remember taking any of my sticks out. I'll fix it after, it's fine. Rosie uh, immediately chirps up. She says, well, Okay, as long as you say it's all right then. Um, will you be attending the silk ball match tonight? And uh, Melinda uh, nods. She says, uh, of course I'll be attending. I can't wait to see our team tonight. Um, you will be refereeing tonight, won't you? And Rosie nods. Yep, I'm the main referee tonight. So, uh, again, you better make sure your team is on their best behavior or I'm going to penalize them. I won't be taking any bull crap. And Melinda like shakes her head. She says, "Don't worry. The Wither Blooms always play by the rules." And Nithlia, um, that is maybe the most genuine and sincere statement she's uttered so far. In terms of her tone, in terms of the fact that like she's not like giving any sort of like nervous twitch or jitters or anything like. If there's anything you're noticing she's passionate about, it seems to be Silk Ball. And especially the team she seems to be involved with. Nithlea doesn't care for sports, so she just kind of looks away. Okay. Um, Melinda nods and yeah, wrote... At, yep, go ahead. At this point, Ina's just going to tap her foot. Um, you're going to show us someplace? I'm completely ignoring... I've been basically watching the area around and paying no attention to her little problems with the, her hair and like um are we going in direction here what are we doing where are we off to she nods i 
you're right. I'm sorry. Rosie, by all means, uh, I hope we haven't been holding you up too long. And Rosie nods. She says, it's okay. I've, I've got to hurry off and get, and get ready for the uh, match tonight. And you see her quickly uh, scurry off. Uh, and then she quickly passes by all of you with a with a with a genuine, a contented smile. And she says, "And I hope to see you all there at the game." Before quickly right. scurrying off. Melinda, who you can tell, is still uh, shell shocked. Uh, with like a bit of emotional whiplash, uh, gestures over to a couple doors here and says, um, well, um, first I wanted to show you the main study rooms. Uh, these will be where most of your classes take place uh, when you are doing any of our general uh, classes or taking any remedial or extracurricular um courses to make up for perhaps penalties or incidents or maybe just a little bit of higher learning if you come with me she says um, and uh, she has you all kind of pile at the door she says um, she coughs for a moment uh, before she uh, says, um, okay, uh, now f at first, and she opens the door, and inside you see uh, four rows of chairs uh, that seem to be about five feet spaced apart, uh, plenty of room to sit down with a writing utensil or book, quill, uh, you name it, and uh, to be able to take notes. And you can see towards the very front is a small desk for a professor, as well as a small little podium. Uh, along the back wall is a blackboard that seems to have, uh, right now, uh, nothing of note. Uh, it seems somebody at some point has made a small little doodle of a cat meowing uh, in one of the corners uh, that hasn't yet been erased. Uh, you realize, as uh, I as I say that, that there is a stool uh, near the blackboard, and that the erasure marks only seem to make it halfway up the blackboard, whereas the uh, picture of the cat is very high up on the blackboard itself. Um, Melinda then takes an opportunity to shut the door, and says, "That was a normal classroom. However, in the event that there is say." a hundred students attending the class in a room that clearly could only see 20. She reopens the door and now you see a very large amphitheater. It looks two or three times as large as the previous room. There is a central podium with a desk, uh, a blackboard that is on some sort of mechanical roller, and uh, there are a circular seating arrangement that seems to spiral closer and closer to the uh, to the center uh, where the professor stands. Says uh, these rooms are actually quite capable of accommodating any size of classroom uh, necessary, and the rooms actually take shape to ensure that there is plenty of ample seating for anyone, even if you wish to sit all by yourself and she nods she says um, these are where any of the uh, general studies will take place uh, such as uh, one of your very first exams um, on uh, the treatise on owl bears so make sure to study up on that it will be on the test and um, it will take place here and i hope can't wait to see how you all do and Barry, she again looks over at you and smiles uh, before looking to the rest of you and giving a curt little nod. I lean over to Nithlia and I, uh, I whisper in her ear, do you think she just made owl bears up? Do you think it's a real thing? Yes. And you know what? I bet that there's more she's not telling us about. 
that's really crazy. Like I, I don't believe it. I, I'm not believing a word for a second. Like that, there's just everything that's coming out of her mouth. I feel like she's hiding everything. It's kind of a half truth. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There's definitely more going on. What do we know? Was the uh, drawing of the cat still on the chalkboard in the expanding room? Yes, actually. Um, you had noticed that uh, on one side of the chalkboard was a picture of a cat. On the other side, uh, there was actually many different sketches. Most had been uh, completely erased, but there were still like chalk lines that were left and uh, small like half letters that weren't uh, finished being erased. But it was mostly the, the picture of the cat. It's kind of visible that whoever had been teaching most recently was rather short in stature. Uh, I'd like to go take a look at it. Okay. Um, I'm, so I'm assuming this is uh, Rosie's room, possibly. Is she a professor here? What is she? Uh, Melinda uh, looks at you quizzically for a moment, and then is like, "Oh, um, no, I'm so sorry. Actually, she's one of the students here. Uh, she volunteers as a referee in the silk ball matches." Uh, but she's actually a student, much like yourselves. Uh, she's only been here for one year, uh, compared to the new recruits as yourself, but she'll be entering year two very soon. Uh, she's one of our best and brightest when it comes to Silk Ball. She so knows the every silk ball, The oh. Silk Ball, uh, like, fast track us into like, early graduation? Is there something that we need to think about there? What, what's happening? Well, uh... When it comes to Silk Ball, um, the biggest thing to be on the lookout for is a, it can act as a gateway to meeting new students, uh, making more friends, as the connections will serve you greater and greater as you expand your academic horizons. You get the impression at first she starts off with like a very standardized -ish feel, um, but she's kind of gotten used to Nithlia's uh, kind of like ambivalence or like lack of care. Um, and Barry's just been not really all that responsive uh, to many of her like uh, like prodding and, and encouragements. And uh, Oodle uh, with his last little conspiratorial uh, little whisper um, she's now uh, not sure exactly how well received her words are, uh, but she does seem quite insightful. And uh, she nods. She says, uh, sorry, I have kind of got lost in um, the usual. Uh, to be more blunt, yes, a very popular silk ball career can quite literally springboard you uh, to greatness in many cases. Um, I've known many uh, professional silk ball player who have access to means far beyond uh, one who'd never participated at all. So what you're saying is your extracurricular activities may f push you forward into more opportunities, more experiences that may tell you what your future is going to hold or how you're going to go along? Well, I would say that ultimately your future is up to yourself. But yes, uh, if you were, by chance, uh, excellent or skilled at Silk Ball, uh, it could do you wonders. As we lose Oodle again. Um, rest in peace, my dude. Um, but in addition to that, um, just the the sheer fame that comes with such a prestigious uh, title of being Silk Ball champion uh, is, 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 is well earned and is often a source of great esteem for many of our now, um, not retired, what's the word I want, um, professional and like a graduated students. Alumni? Yes, yeah. thank you. Alumni was the word I wanted and I just was blanking.
Um, she uh, smiles and says, uh, yes, if if you'd like, I, Barry, I can introduce you to the Witherbloom uh, Silk Ball Club a little bit later. And uh, if, uh, Aeland, if you were interested in Quandrix's Silk Ball team, I could happily show you around. And uh, Nithlia and Ul, I believe you're both Silver Quills, so I'll have to show you to their um, to their team um, uh, lodgings, but uh, if you'd like, I could happily show you around. Um, There's no need. But if you show me where the greenhouse is, I'd be more than happy to oblige. Greenhouse. Very well. I'll keep that in mind. She smiles. More than happy. That sounds like a bad medical condition. <laughs> What's that? Sorry? I didn't hear that. Said more, she said more than happy, and I said there was a, it sounds like a bad medical condition. Oh. Ha! <laughs> she she laughs uh, a little bit forced, um, as she's kind of gotten the impression you guys are uh, kind of done with her. At least it's the impression she feels like she's getting. She hasn't been I able thought, to read you guys was, very well. But I thought she was done with us. She just sort of stopped in the middle of this room. That was it. <laughs> is there is there more to this tour still? Or? Why, yes. We've only scratched the very 1% of the school has to offer. By all means. Only 1% of Laura be doing this way, in my answer. Yes. Indeed. Well, very well. I guess I should speed up the tour a little bit then, shall I? And she gestures uh, further down the hallway uh, to another set of doors. Uh, there are many classrooms like this uh, around the biblioplex. Um, you are more than welcome to enter and use them as you see fit. But if class is going to start in one of these rooms, which you see on this magical scroll here, which she gestures next to the um, next to the wall, there is actually in a glass plaque, uh, there is a magical scroll um, and you can see that like people have tried to pry at the uh, glass container that the scroll is in, uh, but so far their uh, efforts have been futile. Uh, you can see that there is actually a list of six classes that are coming up in the next uh, six hours. Uh, and then she nods. She says, uh, come with me. Uh, I will uh, take you to the uh, next area here. I, again, I apologize for dawdling this along a little bit too long, uh, too much. You're always showing us around. I don't understand what you're apologizing for. Nithlia literally doesn't understand where her apprehension is coming from because Nithlia just doesn't have interest in school, so she doesn't understand why this woman is feeling so shut down. So she's just like, okay, be sad, I guess. Is like, I don't know why you're feeling bad, but okay. So she begins heading uh, up the side here, um, where you can see over on the left hand, uh, left hand side, there's a small little like courtyard ish area where um, there is a couple of stone benches, uh, along with a small little green area where there's a small little fountain where a uh, uh, a ivy plant has grown out from the top. Uh, there actually seems to be a couple of black robed, green trimmed uh, uh, mages here who are tending to the uh, the fountain, as well as a, a younger uh, orc who, uh, upon uh, noticing uh, the group of young students uh, wandering by, waves over at you. Oodle flips him off. <laughs> Nithlia, Is that... Nithlia notices and she waves, but then she sees Oodle flip him off, so she just kind of feels a little defeated and drops her oh. hand and then just looks at them a little ap apologetically. Did you say orc? Yes. Barry immediately grabs his dagger. Uh, Melinda looks over at you, uh, Barry, in a bit of mix of shock and confusion. He says, uh, no, no, no weapons. Um, 
I assure you that Urzma Talk is a, one of our finest first year students. Uh, he would be pleasure to, and then like realizes Oodle that you're making a very rude gesture. And says, uh, mm, Oodle, was it? What's the name? What's the game? Don't trust anything he says. Nithli just kind of takes her hand and like puts it over his and like moves his finger. And she's just like, put this away, please. I think you should stop being rude just, now. Just, just because you said please, I'll put it away. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um. You see now, like as you look over. Um, there is a large, thick, rimmed glasses, uh, wedged upon his nose. Um, there is a large scroll that he's been scricking, uh, um, uh, writing down, uh, upon. And, uh, at the same time, he is, uh, also with his other hand, uh, gouging out weeds from the, um, from the uh, the fountain area, and uh, is it the same one from before? Oh, sorry. Question mark. Is yes, the same same, same orc. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. I'm just describing him a little bit more. Um, oh well, no, I mean, is it the same little dragon dude that Nithli was talking to? Uh, no. No. Okay. The, there there seems to be a lot of a lot of uh, ocular problems, like like yeah. Who are, yeah, a lot of students need corrective lenses here, it seems. <laughs> Ironically, it's a little bit like the two characters, everybody else has been <laughs> fine. Funny. But it's like, huh, yeah, odd. I've it's been, like, really? I, I haven't noticed that. To no, no, no I, I know. I just, I'm, I'm getting a <laughs> kick out of it, too. Um, uh, so, um, Urzma talk at first, um, like, uh, sees your rude gesture. Uh, and, like, you see him, like, scrunch his nose. And he uh, looks over to uh, Melinda and very politely is like, uh, Melinda, please, if you're going to introduce me, I please, please request that you use my full name. Um, just so that we get off on the right foot as opposed to the wrong one, like some people seem to be interested in leaving behind. Um... Please, my friends, and he gestures to all of you, although, um, Oodle, he's kind of giving you a bit of a side eye. Um, and he says, um, please, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Urz Mektok Groz, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, that's your full name? Why, yes. No. Oodle struggles not to flip him off again. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Please do not. Nope. Okay. Um, I will ask you guys as players now. But... Okay. I, I will ask you guys as players now. Um, would you prefer to uh, leave it in the air for your own judgment as to how things are resolved? Or would you prefer to do like um, opposed checks? Like uh, having Nithlia do a persuasion check and Oodle doing some sort of like charisma save or something, like something to like uh, give you like an opportunity, perhaps that like, so it's not just like every time I try and stop this person, they just won't listen. Um, it's up to you guys how you prefer to handle those kinds of interactions. I'm willing to leave you guys to sort those out on your own, but I'm just very cognizant that like if somebody is actively trying to interfere or hinder. Okay. I just want to well, make sure that people know that we want to make sure it's point, fair. All right. So well, at this point, since this is the second time, Nithli is a little frustrated with this look, you know, so she's going to try to intimidate Oodle a little bit. Okay. Like, Oodle didn't actually do it. He was just struggling not to. Yeah, but she's going to try to intimidate you anyways, because she can okay, yeah. tell. She can tell. That the chaos is brewing. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm down for it. Yeah. So Oodle, um, you uh get a little bit of like a stare from uh, Nithlia. Like, how do you want to respond when you see that she's like giving you this like "don't do it" stare? 
I give, I give her a wink and stick up my tongue, essentially. Okay. So to why, know, like... why don't you make a persuasion check for me? And whichever of the two is the higher roll will be the one that uh, wins out in terms of, like, understanding, like, kind of where things settle. Persuasion? Uh, persuasion, yes. And if you guys do feel like you would provide a different response or a different check, I would be fine with that, too. I just... I just, I, I know that in some cases somebody can be like, no, I do the thing. I know somebody's telling me not to, but I do the thing. So, Oodle, um, you're like, ah, oh, I'm just joking around. But all of a sudden you kind of get like a cold sweat on the back of your neck. Like, she, she might be willing to throw down if you, you don't kind of respect her re request not to continue to stir shit. Um. And uh, Urzma talk, uh, Urzmak talk, uh, Grolish, uh looks over at you, Nithlia, and like you can see, like almost like a nod of appreciation. Um, Aeland, Barry, how do you how do you guys greet Urzmak? Do you give him a, a kindly gesture? Do you greet him? Uh, do you kind of remain di indifferent? Well, when I first saw him, I drew my dagger. Oh, right. I'm sorry. You did do that. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I completely I, forgot that I'm happened. I'm looking at the interaction. I'm not even paying attention to it. We're talking to sleep. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Why do you drive the dagger? Is that a cultural thing? I'm not quite sure on these things. <laughs> right. Barry's kind of shaking a little bit while he's doing it. Like, you can tell that there's something, you know, wrong. Right. See, Nathalie was picking on me for flipping him off, and then meanwhile, Barry's got like a dagger sticking out. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, don't like the situation, guys. It's crazy. Um, am oh, I able? Flip him off. Can I like? Well, am I able to like? I don't know, maybe reached in my bag and like give him like a mint loop to smell or something so he calms down. Like can I roll medicine for that? Um Oh wait, like well, should I roll it, are you, are, like so this is why I wanted to ask. Like, Barry, would you prefer that like Nithlia just like would you prefer that Nithlia just do like a persuasion check to kinda of get an idea of like how persuasive they're trying to be? Or would you prefer that they we try and role play that out? Although I know sometimes that it can be hard to just on the spot kind of come up with like a convincing argument as to why not to do a thing. Uh, I'm fine either way. Okay. Um, so. Okay. So then, what? Maybe maybe this is what I'll say. Um, I will encourage you guys to role play the scene as best you can. But if you feel like you aren't getting your intent across well enough, I will happily ask for a roll to kind of give us a better gauge of like how serious uh, your attempt is coming across. Fair enough. If that sounds okay with everyone, or... Yeah. Yeah? Does that sound fair? Yeah, I'm okay with this. Okay. I would actually like to... I'm seeing the situation as it's unfolding with the dagger and the flipping off. Is there... Can I uh, try and roll some sort of insight to see what sort of emotions are playing out on either side of this if it's if he's actually recognizing right. somebody so not. so this would be a question that i would have ba it, barry it doesn't sound like you're trying to conceal your your uh, fear or shock um but if you'd like to keep like your actual feelings hidden i could have you roll a deception check against aelin's insight for example no, no. Um, I, You're I pretty open book. If, you, if he rolled any kind of perception, uh, he he would tell that I am both scared and angry. Okay. Okay. So there is a bit of scared there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, really, what I was trying to get at is the fact that I'm not sure how what I would actually understand of of it, or even perceive it. So I just want to right. see what Okay. It. Right. Understandable. Okay. Uh, then... 
I think. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, Ayland, give me an insight check. Uh, but this will just be for a general like vibe check, I guess. For like, oh, I rolled a zero. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Aelin, you're like, peop people have are having Aelin's feelings. eyes gloss over and he starts drooling. Yeah. <laughs> no, Aelin's just like... Aelin, there, there is a vibe going on, but for you, you're like, people are having feelings. I don't know what feelings are, why people are having them. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're... And I'm basically just like, I'm looking at whatever time piece there might be with it. It's like the sun or something. Like, right. Are we supposed to be on this tour? I don't understand what we're doing here. Just, just right. let's keep going. Okay. Um, so, like, mm -hmm. Nithlia can see the visual here, so she just wants to diffuse the situation. So, uh, like I said, should I roll? Like, I, I'm trying to figure out if I should roll a persuasion or a medicine, because well, my... So then here, my... I, I've got a better idea I just thought of. Um, Barry... Since it's your character that's, I think she's trying to diffuse primarily the most. Um, is there? Do you think your character could be convinced or help aided in some way uh, to calm down of the situation? Of course. Okay. Like um, then, um, uh, Nithlia, um Barry seems uh, receptive to like. Uh, like persuasion or like intimidation perhaps, but we've seen how he reacts to something he finds scary. Is there no, a specific... I wouldn't intimidate him. Um, she would want to like like um, she might want to like grow a plant and make him smell it to calm down or she would try to talk to him. Okay. Like not intimidate him, but to actually talk to him. Okay. Barry, do you feel like this is something like your character would like need to like battle like uh, not battle within himself but like do you think that there, this fear of yours is something that might overrule like somebody else's like assurances no i think uh any kind of assurances or uh like uh Nithia was suggesting some kind of medicinal uh soothing or calmingness uh would definitely bring him down okay uh Nithlia, why don't you make a medicine check for me then to see if you can think of something off the top of your head that could perhaps. Um, Nithlia, you produce uh, a couple of herbs out of your component pouch, your druidic uh, pouch, uh, and you offer them to Barry. Um, Barry, um, as as you receive what, them. Watch this. Go ahead. Just hold them in your hand, crush them up a little bit. And smell them. I think you'll be able to calm down. Uh, he takes them, he crushes them, and he starts to smell them from his hand. And uh, it does kind of soothe his mood. Okay. All right. How are you feeling? Better. Uh, my father was killed by orcs. I'm so sorry to hear that. I don't trust them. I mean, you can't blame you, but if I'm going to be honest, I don't think you're in danger here. <laughs> you you look over at Urzmek Talk, who's like got uh, weeds in both hands. He's like pulled out of the ground. He like looks over at you guys, like, we good? Like he doesn't say anything, but you can tell he's giving like a curious like. Everything cool now? Just stay out of my way. Urz McDog uh, replies, he's like, Listen, I'm just here to do some of my horticultural uh, horticultural work with my, with my extracurricular club. I'm not here to cause problems. And, uh, do you, like, how loudly do you say that your father was killed by orcs, by the way? Uh, just loud enough for Nithia to hear. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do a perception check for Urzmuk Talk. Uh, uh, 
can I get a perception check from everyone, please? Everyone? Everyone, yes, please. Oh my lord. Get <laughs> this is great. See, you can never tell what an orc is thinking. O Oodle. That was perception we're after? Yes, please. Just need a perception roll. That's performance. Yeah. There we go. We got there. I can't believe you rolled another critical, but what the actual <laughs> shit? I can't see that. What did I roll? You rolled a 13 in the end. Nice, nice, nice. But you rolled so a 20. You, you rolled a critical for the. Well, what you notice, Oodle, is Urzmuk talks ears perked up when he mentioned a uh, orc killing Barry's father. Despite the fact he probably shouldn't have been able to hear that, he actually picked up on it. Um, and you can see for a moment, uh, as you like look over to Urzmuk talk and then back to Barry, the Urzmuk talk like lifts his spectacles for a moment and like wipes his eye with one of his knuckles, just as if there's like a tear forming. And he, you can tell that he's wrestling with something at the moment. Like there's something he's thinking about saying or doing but he can't he's not sure how to approach a, a situation like this i uh is is barry by him like not by himself i know he isn't but is he kind of away from everybody right now or is he still no he's just right behind you guys like he just drew the dagger and was like <gasps> and then he like told nithly after she offered him some crushed herb that he was like, my father was killed by orcs. And like, as you said that, you like looked over at the only orc that you could see and you saw his ears like twitch and he like looked over at Barry and you saw his, like his eyes water and he like wiped his, his like eye as if to like blot out the, the tear. And I, I heard him say, or I, I'm, am I just getting the general feeling that? Well, no, like you saw, wrong, you, I, I heard you say heard that? Barry say it, because okay. you're you're close, you're just as close to him as Nithli is. But you noticed, like you just happened to look over. Nobody else noticed. You happened to look over and you saw that the orc also seemed to have heard it. Like his reactions tell you everything. Like you happen to perceive it well enough that his actions are telling you that he heard it too. And seems to be bothered by it for some reason. Uh, I look away from him over there because I don't really give two shits about that guy. But I walk up to Barry and I kind of say to him, yo, uh, listen, man. These bugbears, they kind of came after my dad. So I, I get what you're feeling right there. Uh, if you ever need anyone to talk to, I'm here for you. Thanks. Uh, do you need a dagger for bugbears? You, you know what? We'll have each other's back. Orcs give you a problem. I'll, get, I'll have your back. Bugbears for me. Sound good to you? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Awesome. And thanks for the, the herbs, Nithlia. They're doing the trick. No need to cause violence on the first day of school. At least none that I don't incite. Now, I want to know what kind of plants he's pulling. Somebody tell me about them. What about a garden? Is there a garden here? Are there any plants here? I need plants. You, you can There's see... Berries. I was going to say, you can see that Urzma Talk is currently standing in a 30 foot by 30 foot little garden with a, a fountain in the center that a big shrub has, like, grown from, like, as if it's, like, a water, a cascading water fountain that, like, the bush has just kind of grown around it and, like, embraced it. Um, and, like, he's just, like, pulling out. And you can you can see it pretty easily, like, Nithli, especially yourself as a druid. Uh, I won't need you uh, to make a... Uh, uh, like a nature check or anything like this is pretty obviously a weed like these are some pretty common weeds that Urzmuk talk is is pulling and you can see that like if he had left the weeds to grow the 
the garden would have probably looked a lot worse. But at, you can also see that, like on his uh, on his uh, vest, he's got a little lapel pin that's got like a leaf, and then a tree is like underneath it. It's like they put a they put a little tree emblem, and then they put a little leaf emblem over top of it, as if like to signify like the leaf eventually becomes the tree or so on, something like that. Seems to have something to do with gardening or growing of plants and. The like. <laughs> Nithia can tell that um, he's really nice. So she's not going to intimidate him. So she's just going to say, Oh, I really like your pin. What's it for? Is there a gardening club here? Because obviously she only said it because she wanted to change the subject. Okay. Yeah, so she's just trying to get everyone's attention away from what right. just happened. So right. She's trying to keep things moving forward, so. Absolutely. Why is that not working? Uh, give me two seconds here. I'm just going to reboot my own system. Do, 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 do. Try to figure out why a character sheet didn't pop up anymore. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, he no he nods and he's like, um, yes, actually there is. It's called the Fantastical Horticulture Club, and um, the pin is to represent that I'm part of this group. Um, I uh I actually take part as a uh, specimen preparer of sorts for the Campus Magic Labs, and um. I'm always looking to help new plants grow that might give us new ingredients for wild and unknown potions. Um, I just go up to the garden and just grow a plant. Like, stick my hand in the dirt and just grow a plant. Okay. Uh, How do I roll for that? I'm Nature. going to actually, uh, can you just uh, go into your spell list uh, for your character sheet, if you don't Ooh. mind? Yeah. Um, I believe you should have, uh, I think you had Druidcraft, unless I'm mistaken. Yes. Yes, I have Druidcraft. So you, there's a little speech bubble button. If you hover over Druidcraft, you'll see a little speech bubble popped up. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Whispering to the spirits of nature, you create one of the following effects within range. Create a timely, harmly sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be, might manifest as a golden orb, and so on and so forth. You instantly make a flower blossom, a seed pod open, or a leaf blood boom. Um, you create uh, an inst instantaneous, harmless sensory effect, that kind of thing. So, um, are you looking to make a flower bloom? Are you looking to like help a seed grow? I want to make a flower bloom. A flower bloom? Uh, what kind of flower? Um, I want to grow a lily of the valley. Okay. So, uh, you put your hand to the ground, and a moment later, you begin to cast the verbal and somatic mm -hmm. wor uh, movements to cast druid craft, and a moment later, a beautiful lily of the valley has sprouted and has bloomed into a beautiful uh, flower and he looks down at it for a moment and like you can see the like the glasses slide down his nose a little bit uh, and then he quickly like um, pushes his glasses back up to his eyes and uh, says that was spectacular I, I know I, I'm similar uh, capable of similar feats but um, to choose such a beautiful plant So the way that I kind of imagined it was more a little bit more menacingly because of how Nestlea can be. So once she actually touches the ground, she doesn't touch the ground. She jabs her hand in the dirt. Okay. And then she kind of just pulls it out 
And she just kind of looks him dead in the eye, and it just grows. Oh. So it kind of intimidates him a little bit. Okay. You're intimidating okay. him or the plant from grow? No, I'm intimidating him. Okay. Make make an intimidate check. Sorry, I didn't realize you were trying to intimidate him. That's okay. No, she's that's just how she is. She's yeah, just no. menacing. No worries. Um, yeah. Uh, you realize like he's a lot more focused in plants than like any sort of gesture that you're trying to make. The fact that you just like helped grow a plant, which is something that a lot of majors can do. Um, but like to have picked a lily of the valley and like he suddenly like looks over at you with uh, a much more discerning eye um, you get the impression he's trying to get a read on you um, are you trying to hide your emotions or your thoughts or your intent or would you feel like you could probably get a good idea of how you're feeling no, I can really tell how I feel but like I'm not really feeling anything like I'm not angry or trying to intimidate him. That's just how she is. Like she just comes off menacing. Um, but like I don't know. It's like you know those really charismatic people, but they're mm -hmm. so charismatic they kind of creep you out. Sure. Adam Driver. Can... Kind of. It's more like you can. It's like you know how when you can tell someone's like being really like fake towards someone like they fake like happiness or whatever okay like when you know someone's like you don't like someone but they're still trying to play nice she just kind of comes off like that like okay. in a way sure That's just so she comes off yep um and it's because of her fucking shark eyes sure um she's also really shy when she first meets people so she's also doing her best to be outward but she's not good at it okay so she's just she comes off menacing. Mm -hmm. Um, so she's just looking at him, and she's just like, "Yeah, I, I grew this." So, yeah, okay. yes. Okay. I grew this flower. I love the earth. This flower is absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's a spectacular flower. I think you did a great job. Um, and then he like realizes that you're like just trying to kind of and he re uh, realizes oh um i'm sorry uh, by all means carry on with your tour i hope you have a have a good time and he like nods and kind of returns back to planting once he realizes that you're just kind of trying to massage the situation from being any more overheated unintentionally or otherwise Uh, Melinda, after a few moments, realizes that that's a probably a good cue to continue the tour, uh, and leads you past the garden here to another set of doors. Before we go past, uh, Oodle decides to go down to the garden and grab a handful of dirt and then follow on. Okay. You just don't care who sees or anything, you're just gonna r walk, uh, scurry over there, grab them and go? It's, he doesn't need like a whole ton of dirt for someone to look at him and be like, "What the hell are you doing?" That's that dirt's for the garden, but he just grabs like a palmful of it yeah. before he goes. Okay. He doesn't really care who sees him. Yeah. Okay. No, that's what I was curious is like, how much are you like trying to be sneaky about it if you're trying or not? If you're just going up and grabbing some, like, uh, you can see one of the other, um, and you see now like one of the uh one of them was like tucked on uh behind a bush as they were like pulling weeds. But there's actually a couple other Witherbloom students here. They're black robes and the green accents. And uh, one of them like looks up as you like grab a handful and it like tilts his head as if to like understand why you just grab a chunk of dirt. And then like you you want you scurry off to follow back behind Melinda and he like shrugs and goes back to working. Like you could tell like for a moment he was going to say something, but thought the better of it. Oodle just doesn't flip him off simply because of this new fearful respect he has for Nithlia. But uh, it definitely crossed his mind for two seconds. Okay. After a moment, uh, Melinda says, And here we have one of the Prismari workshops, uh, where the uh, many of the Prismari pledge majors work on a variety of different arts and 
um, efforts. Um, come, uh, let let me show you. And she like opens the door, and inside you see. Uh, Why is that not working? Okay, no, that's okay. It is working. I'm just I was on the wrong thing. Uh, you see, uh, it looks like three different prismari. Two of them are working on a couple of paintings along the wall that they're currently painting. Uh, one of them, uh, rather than an actual brush, uh, is using his finger to make little lightning bolts that carve up the the painting into uh, different shapes and expressions. You see like he's currently working on making these lightning bolts do like little ocean waves. Uh, the other one uh, is currently uh, upon the painting striking it with all manner of different paints as he dips his brush into a paint and smashes it almost Jackson Pollock style like just splatter art almost. Uh, and you can see uh, in particular, there is a, uh, let me just pull this up. Where is his name? Oh, uh, that didn't work. Uh, uh let me see here. Do, do. Uh, all players. Okay. Okay. So I've given you guys a handout in the character, the same area where you found your character sheet. Hoping you can see that potentially. There should be one under, I think it's player, uh, Strixhaven, Campus Kerfluffle, Player Handouts, and then NPC and Monster Handouts. So it's a couple things in, but tell me if you're having trouble finding that. Kadoras? Uh, Kadoras, yes. Um, this uh, elf. Uh, you can see currently in the midst of casting a magic spell upon his uh, easel. Uh, he seems to be focused not only on the painting in front of him, but he's currently looking over to his right at the sculpture uh, a, pris a Prismari Pledge Mage is working on. And he seems to be taking the sculpture that the, the Prismari is working on and incorporating it into his painting. Also, uh, I'm going to quickly fix another thing, too. Uh, da, 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 creatures. Let's see, handouts. Uh. <clears throat> I've also updated the uh, Urzmech talk, so he should be also visible in your player handouts. And, oh, and Rosimith. Uh, I'm doing that right now. That that's exactly the reason that I did not like him. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. You don't have to like everyone. Uh, they don't have to like you either. But Mithlia kind of doesn't really have interest in the art. She just keeps looking at the garden. Okay. Um and she kind of just keeps staring at the trees. Okay. The bushes. Okay. And kind of like longingly. Sure. Uh, a little kind of leans down to his bag. Uh, okay. And opens up a little a, a little hole latch that he has kind of the side that is about the size of an eye to look through, and he says, uh, "Hey Hector, check this out." Before he throws the dirt onto the ground. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so Oodle, uh, as you throw the dirt onto the ground, um, at first you expect a like a shock or like a <gasps> a gasp of air or something, and yet um, instead you hear like a oh interesting I'd never thought of that. And you see the the elf uh, now has turned himself towards the group, um, and is looking at the dirt that you've thrown onto the ground, and comes over closer to it, and he's like, "Interesting, interesting." And so the dirt clumped up over here, and oh, and it's like made a little mountain here, and it, it looks like he's like almost looking at it as a different it, form of art. It's performance art. We understand that. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know you had a th uh, an interest in this. Um, your name? And he, like you see him like look over to you, uh, Oodle, as if to introduce himself to you. Uh, yeah, name's Oodle. Don't know if you've heard of me before. It's probably better if you haven't. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> um, he nods. He says, "No, I I apologize. I have not. Uh, are." And he like looks at your robes and says, "Of course, sorry, new new students. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am Kadoris. Uh, likewise, I, I like what you're doing up there with your uh, your artistic skills. Why, thank you. I didn't realize I had somebody who had such a fond appreciation for art." Uh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest, I was hoping that one of those little robots with a dustpan would come up and clean this up, but uh didn't happen. But I'm glad that you appreciate my my dirt pile. It's what a lot of people appreciate about me. I thought it interesting that you decided to use the ground as your easel. I would never have thought to use just the floor itself. I've been so focused on painting upon these easels my visions and ideas that I'm actually kind of surprised I hadn't thought of that before. Um, Nuclea gets so taken aback by how dumb that sounded, she kind of just walks towards the garden again and she just leaves. He, uh, he he leans into you, Oodle, and he's like, "I have a question for you. And please, if if you don't wish to answer, pay me no mind. Have you uh, ever? I guarantee I'll answer it for you. What's the question? Have you ever eaten an entire jar of pickled onions in a single sitting? Twice now. And what do you do with the vinegar after? You're assuming there's any vinegar left in it." Ooh, you drink it too. You're just like me. And he like smiles and like claps his hands together. Um, <laughs> dear, dear God, I'm having art school flashbacks right now. This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you, you ever? Know, I'm gonna stab him with my dagger. He like looks at you. <gasps> do you do you log too? Do do you all log? And he like looks at you. He's like, oh, "I just got a brand new prop bow. Let me show you." And he like goes over to his easel and pulls out from behind his easel a beautiful dark oak, uh, silver strung bow. That he's like, and he like gestures it towards you as if he's like, "Take a look at Cadorus, the eagle-eyed archer," and he like jokingly pulls back the string and thwangs it, which makes a pretty nice sound. Um, but uh, you, you just, just dry fire a bow, that's a bad thing to do. <laughs> he says, um, it's actually been a, a hobby of mine to take place in logging. Um, and he like looks at each of you to see if you know what logging is. After a moment of no response, have you? What's a lard? Oh, it's um, it's actually quite an interesting thing. Uh, it's it's part of what we at the live action role playing guild do. 
Um, we play all sorts of fantastical adventures, and I quite often, especially now that I've bought this brand new bow, uh, often quite uh, take the place of an archer looking to slay a dangerous fiend or a terrible ooze or maybe the darkest of liches that seek in the underbellies of the jungle. And then he notices for the first time, Aeland, uh, the similar robing um, that you're wearing. And you can see that his like bluish and greenish armor and the yellow patterns like break off into small fractals. The pattern on the side of his uh, his head has been uh, like little braids that like s progressively get smaller and smaller. But the number of braids in each align do not change. So, like, it goes from, like, three inches of braid to, like, two and a quarter to smaller and smaller. But there's there's 20 braids in each row or in each column. And uh, yet somehow. So, so no is, this, is this medieval cornrows that he's got? On his yeah, head? yeah, very much oh. so. Uh, have you seen the, the handout or no? I have seen the handout. Yes, that's – I just didn't – that's... Yeah, like the the cornrows, like you try and like count how many strands, and every time there's twenty in that one, twenty in that one, even though they're completely different sized, uh, somehow there's twenty. Um, and he uh, he turns and he's like, um, "Oh, awesome! Uh, I didn't realize uh, a future Quandrix member was among us. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Kadoris. Uh, sorry, actually, I've introduced myself already, but." Uh, I couldn't help myself. Oh, just about to, just I about love to, to hear myself understand. talk sometimes. You know what? I uh, kind of got that from you. Um, oh, no I... worries. I'm ostentatious at best. <laughs> I, I am Aelin. Aelin? I, yes. A pleasure um, to meet you, Aelin. Have you tried eating an entire jar of pickled onions in a single sitting? That might be a little more difficult because I really don't need to eat. But uh, you still must. I, oh, actually, and he like thinks for a moment. What would happen if somebody who didn't need to eat a jar of pickled onions ate a jar of pickled onions? Yeah, it's a kind of a. It's kind of a. Do you like uh, bets, Aland? Do I like bets? Uh, the odds are never truly in any of our favor. So I can't say for certain, but I mean, if the pattern holds, we can always go from there. Um, what kind of bet were you thinking? Well, I would love to see you eat an entire jar of pickled onions. And I would like to wager that you won't get sick from it. Mm, that is an interesting proposal. I'm going to counter that by saying no. And uh, maybe you should go back to your painting, because I can only see there's a couple of mistakes on that one, right? Maybe you, I can, there's a little bit, you, a little bit of the patterns, a little off to the right. Just, just try and fix that. It's buggy. From this he side. like, he like, <laughs> his head like, as if you hit him with like imaginary force of air. Like his head just rocks back a moment. Yeah, uh, nice. Also, give me a second. Uh, Ryan, uh, no, uh, I'm not the only one that can see the map. Uh, the other players can, but they can only see what their characters can see. Which is, for example, as we see here, um, from Barry's perspective, uh, this is what he's able to see on the map. Uh, whereas, uh, Aeland, who's farther over, uh, can only see, uh, this section here. It's a little different. It allows me to kind of obscure the vision and that kind of thing. Like, obviously, they can't see through walls or over the bookshelves. Uh, but that's actually, um, i the only one that can see the full map as I am the uh, game master. Uh, but yes, otherwise, like, to answer your question, like, I, I am the only one that can see the full map. Everybody else can see the map, but only what their character can see. Sorry. Um... You can see Kadoris is, like, taken aback. Like, he just hit him with some whiplash. He's like, what? Preposterous. My pattern can't no, possibly be wrong. And he looks Don't over. Worry. He's like... I know you can fix it. No. It's fine. He looks back at you. He's like, you're absolutely right. I can't believe I missed that. Yeah. Could you... Could you show me where... Where you think the pattern should go? It's 
different for every person, but I can try. Come, come, quickly. It won't take very long, I promise. It's like, and he looks over at uh, Melinda. Is that okay, Melinda? And Melinda nods. She's like, that's okay. You. And she, you get the impression, like, Melinda's like, I wouldn't be able to stop you if I tried. Um, um, Aelin, did you head over uh, to Kodoris's little uh, artisanal spot? I look at uh, Mel- look to Melinda and say, this will just take a minute. And I head over towards Kodoris's okay. thing. Look at, I mean, the angle I was looking at wasn't quite right. But I'll take a look and see from here. Okay, so what you see is a picture of a set of waves crashing into each other. But as the waves crash into each other, as they get farther and farther away, um, the picture's detail doesn't disappear. But you notice that the wa- the, the picture itself has been offset by maybe, I want to say, like a centimeter off to the left. And so the peak, and, and as the, like, the waves crash closer and closer they uh, seem to be slightly off center but what you do notice as well is that there's little ink blots that are on the like fields right near the um, the ocean but they give you this impression like they're moving like they're almost alive like they're rocking with the waves themselves like as the, the as if it was like actual wet paint on the easel that was still moving without any sort of wind or movement or anything. And they seem to be like rocking in unison with the waves, even though the waves themselves aren't physically moving. Mm-hmm. Looking at it, I, I'm going to guess I can't discern. I'm going to try and discern a pattern out of it, like investigate the piece and see if I can. Sure. Give me an investigation check. In the meantime, um, is there anything anyone else would like to do in the meantime? Uh, Oodle leans back down to his bag before closing the little eye hole that he has in it and says, uh, sorry, Hector, I was hoping to show you a cool robot thing I saw earlier, but I'm glad you got to see Aelin diss that guy's painting. That was pretty awesome. You hear only, I thought we were supposed to be quiet. Did I miss something? I, I thought I could show you I could show you a cool robot too, but uh, you know things don't always work out that way, Hector. Sorry. All right, listen, Oodle. You listen here. I'm not gonna. Don't shut that bag on me. It's for your own good. Goodbye. <laughs> it's a pretty bad of tricks for anyone who heard that. Don't worry, it's nothing. Don't worry. Um. Yeah, Ayland, uh Upon investigation... Uh, you notice that there is some magic being weaved into the painting itself. Um, you get the impression this might be like a set piece that's going to be used for the next uh, larg that's going to happen. Um, and that you think that the ink splats that are like shifting and moving are meant to represent some of the enemies they might be fighting in the next larg. So, tactically speaking, I think you should probably maybe lead from this point instead, as I point towards, because like, it's it's still shifting in my vision, but I'm sort of like focusing on the, the points as if I'm noticing what they are, Yep. and go and say, yeah, tactically, it, it seems sound, but it might not shift over to the side, because that hill seems a little, like, a bad placement for, for your troops. Let's, yeah, same over there. And I just, I just, I'll, I'll put a, uh, as if I'm like, I've understood what the overlay is basically by like topographically, 
I'll put uh, a minor illusion over the, the the face of the painting as if it was ground, as if it was like hills, and that and I, and I understand by the rolling of the, the in terms of the shapes of the, of the the patterns that he's right. described and the positions of these things, and just sort of overlay it and say this is about right. <laughs> he nods. He nods. He's like, ah, and you like providing me a stencil for me to to, to better gauge our uh, interesting. Inter- Have you ever gone logging before, Ayland? Uh, literally the first time I've ever heard of it. Would you be interested in joining me one of these times? I'm interested in anything that will... spectacular. That sounds like a plan. I'll let you know when the next one's going to be starting. It's very soon. Fabulous. I'll... I can't wait to hear from you. I promise you, you won't have to fight them all yourself. You'll have me. And many others. If there's fighting, I'll, I'll come. It, like, peeks over... Um, and, uh, he's like, oh, by all means, if you're interested in joining our log, you are more than welcome. And any weapon is a handy weapon. Wait. What do you do with the bodies when they're dead? Uh, it seemed like, pause for a moment. Well, we, um, dispose of them. Um, but usually by just taking them backstage or um, uh, getting a professor to help clean it up. or um, Though I wouldn't necessarily call them bodies. He like, like realizes maybe more of kind of what you're alluding to. And he's, um, anybody who's injured in a log is taken uh, care of by all of the professors uh, who supervise the logs. Um, and I assure you that uh, there would be no uh, death of any student during a log of ours. So you don't actually get to kill anything. Oh no, we kill quite a quite many a thing. Um, I just meant to say that the students are protected as they should be. But you do get to kill stuff. You could be the greatest of heroes at slaying the villainous beasts. Yes. Can I bring my wool? I would have to ask the uh, professor, but maybe. And you could tell he's like uh, somewhat concerned that a a wolf might steal the show? Question mark. But he's also curious to find out. So it's also a maybe for me then as well. Well, I'll have to talk to the professor. I'd love to have more loggers with us. Well, sorry, I've kept you far too long. Uh, by all means, uh, Aland, I look forward to talking to you again soon. And I'll, uh... And he, like, gestures over to the people who haven't introduced themselves. Um... Um, I'm Barry Slaughter. Barry Slaughter? What a name. Sounds like a perfect logger's name. That's my real name. Yes, that makes it all the better. More vivid. Pungent. Strong. And he, like, flexes, but you can tell he's definitely more of a dainty archer than a strong warrior. Okay. Good. Like, you can tell, like, for a moment he was concerned his words might have, like, insulted you unintentionally, and he, like, felt very concerned about that. Uh, And then he looks over to Oodle. And I will happily ask to see if your wolf friend can join us. I'm curious to see what that would have as an effect on a lark. Um, Is he well-trained, would you say? Uh, yeah, he won't hurt anyone, but he'll probably piss everywhere. He's, he's, 
I'm very curious as to what kind of painting that would elicit. Beef super yellow, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, a yellow submarine, perhaps. Uh, and with that, uh, Melinda is still kind of propping the door open for you, Aeland. Um, but uh, Kadoras kind oh, of. Oh, I'm, I'm. I'll take my leave right now, Kadoras. I am on this tour, and I'm going to. Uh, definitely looking forward to to seeing what this enlarging is about. Okay. Hope to see you sometime soon. Bye for now. And I snap my fingers, and the image that I placed over it just disappears. He's like, oh, oh. As the door clicks shut. Use it, use it as inspiration. And actually, I'll give him inspiration. <laughs> okay. I'll use one right now. There we are. Uh, Melinda begins to make her way uh, towards the north side of the biblioplex before uh, she takes a few steps and realizes, uh, wait, uh, Nithlia? I apologize for the delay. Uh, are you willing to continue the tour? Oh, hang on one sec. Okay. Um... Uh, Nithlia. I said, uh, Melinda, uh, like, makes towards the northern part of the building before pausing for a moment and turning back to you and saying, uh, Sorry, Nithlia, we are ready to resume the tour. I apologize if that uh, took too much time. Silently returning. And she leaves the garden. Uh, she begins to head uh, northeast where you guys can see one of the uh, giant robots at work. She says, here uh, you will see that we have yet another garden. This one a little bit um, more decorated. The plants have grown over a little bit, but uh, nothing to be worried about. Uh, before uh, a moment later, a, a small bird flies over to Melinda's um, shoulder. And, and you can see there's a little scroll upon it, which she unfurls and says, um, Oh, oh dear. Um, one moment. And she, like, rolls it back up, attaches it to the, the bird, and uh, looks back at you. And says, um, Students, would you be willing to wait here for me uh, while I uh, attend to a matter I was not expecting to? Uh, it seems there was an issue with the... Uh, the silk ball practice this morning, and uh, one of the participants has injured themselves. Um, I must see to them as I am their supervisor. Do you want us just to continue on with our tour by ourselves, or do you... No, no, I shall return you? momentarily. Um, just have to quickly ensure that I can set his bone correctly. I'll be right back. And then uh, she snaps her fingers and uh, just like that is um, all of a sudden a uh, dust of black and green smoke is left behind as she disapparates. That should not be good for the environment. That looks awful. Uh, what do you guys do in the meantime while she uh, quickly hurries off to fix a broken bone? Are the robots still around? Yeah, the robot's just around the corner here. I am showing Hector the robots right now. Okay. Actually, I'm kind of interested in the robot as well. I'll watch it. Okay. Pursue dirt down the aisles. Was there any of the residue left after she disappeared? 
No, it seems like that was mostly just motes of magic that misted into nothingness. Then I'll go look at the robots. Okay. Uh, it is as you guys are um, uh, looking at the robots that you hear, uh, Aeland, you first hear a cry from behind. Um, as uh, two uh, bushes have tangled themselves with one of the mages. And you can see he's trying to cast a spell, but his mouth has been muffled by one of the, the vines. And uh, his hand has been gripped by the vine of another uh, 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 bush. And uh, he all you can hear is a very strangled... <gasps> And uh, we're going to uh, pause our session there for today. And we will pick up uh, when we can schedule another week. But uh, we will leave it there before our first combat. Good. And uh, I just want to check with everybody. How is everyone? Uh, Ruben, I know you said you were going to have to go soon. So I figured it'd be easier to stop here before we start combat. Um.